The news that the Tate brothers have been waiting for has finally arrived. After having their liberty deprived for almost 10 months, they are finally set free. The news unfurling like a long-awaited sunrise. The house arrest rules finally lifted, and the brothers are finally free to leave their house. I've compiled all the footage I could get my hands on, capturing the essence of their first 24 hours of freedom. As you delve into their journey, consider a like as a virtual high five, acknowledging the effort poured into piecing together this video. Immediately after arriving home, Andrew Tate spoke to the press waiting outside of his house. You can see by this footage just how many journalists were eager to capture his first words after being released. The air was electric, pregnant with the anticipation that precedes a momentous revelation. Cameras clicked. Microphones extended like eager hands, capturing every nuance of what would undoubtedly become a headline etched in time. In this juncture, reminiscent of a crossroads where the ink of history meets the paper of the present, the world awaited, pondering if the mainstream media's portrayal, once akin to a pendulum of praise and criticism, would sway to a new rhythm. As Andrew Tate embarked on this verbal odyssey, each syllable carried the weight of a thousand eyes, his words a vessel navigating the tides of perception. Following his interaction with the press, Andrew Tate retreated to his home, where a wardrobe transformation awaited, a pair of Muay Thai boxing shorts. He then activated the camera, and what unfolded was a riveting five-minute rant that captured the eyes of millions of viewers. I spent three months in a jail cell, in a dungeon, with cockroaches sharing my blanket with me. Three months. Then I finally got released. Seven months, I've been locked in my house. And today a judge decided to let me go. I want everybody at home to understand exactly why that is. Up until now, all of the imprisonment and the deprivation of my liberty had nothing to do with evidence. It wasn't about evidence in a case file. It was the Romanian judicial system trying to decide if one, I am a public danger, or two, I am a flight risk. And to be fair to them, I am not emotional, I am a professional, even when I am suffering. And I understand as an international man of huge financial resource, it's easy to deem me a flight risk. So my liberty was deprived. Only recently I was charged, this indictment appeared. I want everybody at home to also understand that three different federal agencies from three different countries have investigated my life for the last 15 months. Every photo I've ever taken, every video I've ever made, every conversation I've ever had, every phone call, 2,000 people who know me were contacted. Every single ex-girlfriend, my vet, my pool guy, my old house cleaner in an apartment I used to have 11 years ago. You name them. If they had anything to do with me, no matter how tedious the link, they were contacted and they were interviewed. Hotlines were set up. Billboards were made. Has Andrew Tate ever hurt you? Do you have any information on Andrew Tate? The media was offering 50,000 pounds for anybody who would give a negative story to me. Find another man who has hundreds of ex-girlfriends and not a single one of them rolled on me. Not a single one of them for money would say I'm a bad person. In fact, they would all say the opposite and defend me and stick up for me. You want to talk about a man of moral fiber? Find another man who can go through that. There's not another man on the street you can find whose ex-girlfriends who wouldn't turn on him. The media, all over the news, Andrew Tate's the worst man that's ever been. Andrew Tate's a human trafficker. Andrew Tate's a crime boss. He's a crime lord. Andrew Tate has all this money from illicit activities. Every penny I've ever made, all of my bank accounts seized. 15 million euros of assets were taken from me. They've been through every single bank transfer that I've ever sent. All of it, head to toe, to put this indictment together. So when this indictment is finally created, it should be an opera, right? It should be Shakespeare. It should show money transfers, victims, old victims from long ago, videos, pictures, medical records. This indictment should be absolutely bulletproof. The indictment was put together. I was held for six months without charge. That's the longest possible time I can be held without charge. The day before they finally submitted this indictment, it took as much time as they could. They took it down to the wire every minute they could to get this indictment together. And now the indictment's been put in front of a judge. And what has the judge done? The judge has picked up this indictment, looked at it, and said, this is garbage, let him go. Their bulletproof indictment, after all I just described, they finally put together a document that the judges instantly said, let him go, this man should not be held. Anybody who believed this garbage, anybody who was insulting me while I sat inside of a jail cell, saying that maybe I am a human trafficker because of some stupid video from 10 years ago, any of these people who once insulted me or refused to defend me because they were scared, and that is the same thing, 
Something I haven't realized. A whole bunch of people who are my friends now and on my team now and are now begging me to bring views to their shit podcasts didn't have very much to say while I was sitting in a fucking jail cell. Not very much at all. Don't think I don't know. Me and my team know exactly who was on my team and who wasn't. And I also know what I have done and what I have not done. And God knows the same. It doesn't matter if I get fucked at the end of this. It doesn't matter if I get completely destroyed. It doesn't matter if they put me in jail for life. I know what I have done and I know what I have not done. And I find absolute solace in that. Now I am free. Yes, I will remain free until the trial date when this garbage is finally thrown out and my name is absolutely not really clear. Anybody who believes any of this garbage is going to regret it because I tell you something, Tristan said something to me in that jail cell was completely true. He said, 13 years in the Chateau d'If and then the world is ours. If you have not read The Count of Monte Cristo, I strongly recommend that you do. In my final act of defiance against the Matrix, I've decided for my first day of freedom, I will visit the mosque and I will pray to God because Allah is the best of planners and then I will return to my house and stay home. That's right. You locked me up for 10 months. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? I'm a bit tired. I'm going to stay in my house. That's what I'm going to do. I only want to talk to God and I want to be by myself. I don't want to talk to any of these snakes, any of these people on the internet trying to get views out of me, any of these people who pretend they support me and give a shit. When I really, at the, when it gets down to the wire, it's me in a jail cell, me and my brother by ourselves. And all these other people don't seem to fucking give a fuck until there's views involved. Lies get tired. Lies get exhausted. It takes untold energy to continue to prop up a lie. It goes against the laws of physics. There's only so many times you can tell the world I'm a human trafficker with no evidence. Where's the girls? Where's the videos? Where's the victims? Where's the pictures? There's nothing. How many times can you continue to repeat the same garbage with no evidence? Nobody believes it. The moral arc of the universe bends towards truth. And I tell you something, when I am released from all of this, I'm going to use my massive platform and enormous financial capability to launch a charity to prevent this happening from any man ever again. This is enough and it's going to have to stop and I'm going to stop it. Andrew Tate was then spotted getting a massage at his compound. On the first day of his release, Andrew Tate decided to stay home and have dinner with his closest friends and family. Their lawyer was also seen partying at night in their backyard. The Tate brothers managed to get their hands on a pair of supercars, which they then used to drive around Bucharest. It's hot! Are you not hot? They then went to a restaurant to enjoy a nice summer day. Here's a video of Tate buying some expensive cigars. Oh, 
Blue Moon. Give me the most special cigar you have. Special cigar. The most special cigar you have. The most expensive. The one that's been here longest. After their relaxing time outside in the summer sun, the Tates arrive back home to get to work and train. Thirty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 